Hello, I'm J.C. Hayward. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 5 tonight, scared investors send stocks plummeting. We'll have details on Wall Street on Eyewitness News at 5. Sana, who is one of the EMTs, and Ursula, you've been down there off and on since Tuesday. Yeah, basically. I, I work over by um, the federal courts, and Tuesday when this happened, we got, and got stuck there. We couldn't leave Manhattan, so... I went in and tried to just help, so we got taken over there. And you've been working shifts of what? What kind of shifts are you working? Mm, anywhere from, it's basically, it's not even shifts, it's till you're tired and till you can't take it no more. And then you take a break and then you just back out? Sleep a little while, you know, it's like right now I'm just going back because I had to get out of there, have a little normalcy, you know. We well, you say you had to get out of there, I mean, I, and, and I have listened to the reports on the news over and over again and hear people asking the questions of, what is that you see? What is it like? And and I've gone, how the heck can somebody ask that question? But can I ask that question of you? Because I think the people across America want to know. I mean, you've been on, are you a mother? Yes. How many children do you have? I have two. So you have two babies at home. And to see the carnage that you must be seeing, what is this? It's hard because, like, one of the worst things was, um, a lot of people are focusing on the World Trade Center, you know, which I understand, but what they don't understand is that there's the plane victims, too. Um, they had a baby carriage, and there was a ba no, no baby in there, just bones, and it's just like, it's rough being a mother, seeing that, you know? But I mean, it, you have to, you have to get through it, you know? It's like, I've lost my voice, you know, because I keep trying to, do things, you know, just to alleviate my mind from what the reality of it all is. It's it's too surreal. How, how can you get a person like myself? In the last couple of days, I've stayed away. I've tried to stay away because I know that th there's work being done, and you don't need me in your face right now. But but the rest of the country, we all sit and watch the TVs. We see you at night in the yellow jackets, digging my hand and trying to help those that, that, that they bring out, and at least trying to offer assistance. How, how can you make me understand what it's been like for you, and how is this going to affect you for the next month, the next year, the next couple of years of your life? Well, I mean, the way I look at it like this, if you're not already there, you know, I know there's a lot of volunteers who want to join and, and help the effort. If you're not already there, I don't recommend going there. I mean, you don't want to see this. I, you know, what what the people down there are saying, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't put on my worst enemy. You know, the city, you know, no one can say that New York is not there for its people because not only New York, but this whole country has just pulled in so much. And it's just wonderful the way they, I mean, food, on a lighter note, I think I'm eating better there than I am at home. I just, I was walking <laughs> down the street and I see people carrying you know, 10, 15 pizzas in their hands, taped oh, together, yeah. just asking people, do you need something to eat? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, they got people on the side, you know, cheering and everything like that. It's wonderful. Um, you stopped me and you said, Montel, please, please, make sure you tell just, America what. Why don't you tell them? Just thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, so much, you know, for the prayers and for, just, you know, just... <laughs> Well, we, we, I'm going to tell you, I know the people watching right now, they're thanking you and thanking people like yourself for being out there. Um, every time we see what appears to be a human form pulled out, you know, we see guys like yourself and women like yourself in the yellow outfits jumping, running, trying to see what you can do. So, I mean, I think the thanks come from us to you, but we'll accept them. Um, on a personal note, I just want to tell my family and everybody, you know, that I'm okay because I know... I lost my cell phone yesterday in the thing, and it wasn't a quite priority to go get it. So um, my phone's working out, so you can call me, you know, because they were calling. Thanks so much, Ross. Thank you.
Tonight at 5, as America recovers and heads back to work, hear how area families are coping with the loss of their loved ones. And our heroes will now open the marketplace. The green button. Markets reopen on Wall Street. Look at closing numbers from the first day of trading since last Tuesday. And Reagan National Airport remains closed. We'll have the latest information on if and when flights will resume. Tonight at 5 on 9 Eyewitness News. I wanted you to hear some positive stuff because um, last night, me and my friend Jeff right here, we were, uh, we were digging in Tower 1 and two people were rescued while we were in there. And when we were leaving around 10 o'clock at night, there was someone up in the tower across the street, SOS, and with a flashlight, they and sent people up and got them too. The floors up there, all of a sudden you see a little light just flashing. Someone just flashing a light saying, look up here, and someone saw it, and a few people just flew hope. into the building. There's definitely still hope. So, I mean, what do you think? I mean, right now here we are looking at three there's days people after. Are, people are in there. There's, definitely, are in there's, there's there. definitely people there's in there. We were there late this last, last night. night, so you know what? Real late last night, and they're still yeah. flashing hellos. Wait, you were there late last night. I'm looking at the watch. It's got to be 2 o'clock, yeah, 2, yeah. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just hope. You, 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 you look at it, and you see some people, you like, you know, if they can make it, you know, people are strong people. People don't want to die. Like, especially not like this. People aren't going to give up. I'm there. Yeah, if you're sitting there, I mean, you're going to not lose your hope. If my family were there, I'd want everyone else to volunteer I'm I, I work in like I work for me I'm working music uh, this is like I'm all geared up I don't have to do any physical labor because, I mean you want to get in there and they're not letting you in and then you want to wait like yes sir, we want we've got ourselves in there we just yeah, want we just getting in there in. tower and one like we were there, there ground zero they don't want they don't want everyone going in but once you get there you're they helping everybody they they're not, they're not turning no one around well, you know I mean the rest of the nation is looking out and looking at guys like as you say you work in music yeah, I, I work in construction. In construction, but this was not, you know. No, no, nothing like this. <laughs> nothing I don't like even this. do physical labor. I'm on the other side of the construction world, but I'm, in, I'm involved in it. But this is ridiculous. This is just, everyone's here. People from all, all states are here. Come on, what's different people there? We were standing next to some guys from the Kansas Police Department last night helping us take stuff out of the rubble. Yeah, that's all we were doing. From Alabama, he just grabbed his dog yeah. and he drove to Alabama, and I was like, he goes, I didn't even wait. He just got my car and I, and I got here the next night. If we had to say what the true spirit of America is, would you? Say that's it. Uh, yeah, I would. I think that, that's, we just that's got out from thing. Penn Station and some guy pulled over and said, are you going down there? We said, yeah, he drove us. I have a feeling that, that the impression of what New York was has changed now forever. Oh, it, no, it, I have new respect for, for being American and, and yeah. being a New Yorker, period. I mean, I didn't, I was, ne I was never Mr. Joe Patriotic, mm -hmm. but now I'm like, I'm an American. This, you, don't, yeah. you, don't, you don't mess with our country like this. This is our country. Yeah. And that's a message I think is going to reverberate around the world. Thank you, guys. No problem. John, you were one of the uh, EMTs? I'm, one of the, I'm with the EMS and uh, fire department doing search and rescue inside voluntarily. And how many days have you been down here? Uh, three days. I've been going home to sleep, but uh, three days about 12 hours each day. You say. I, you know, I said this, and I've said this in my own interviews, when people are asking me questions. What has appalled me is that we have the tendency to ask the question, what is this like for you, and how do you feel? But just so that people can understand what that is like to be down there, digging through the rubble, trying your best, praying and hoping that you can find somebody alive, what has that been like for you, sir? Um, it's been a new experience. It's been something that, uh, that I never thought in my whole life you, you would see. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want to be able to give hope to those who are waiting for, to see someone come home. And that, uh, that hope should still be there. And that, uh, these, these workers in here, uh, the city's pulled together. And these workers are working the hardest I think they've ever worked in their whole life. To get their brothers and to get their families. How many people have you personally helped to rescue or, or to pull out? Have you, have you been involved in any of the excavations of any of the people? Pers personally, sir, I, I think I... In total, it's probably been about a dozen, dozen and a half. Uh, unfortunately, there have not been any survivors uh, that I have uh, been capable of pulling out. Um, but again, the hope is still there. How does today is the day that that you got to you got to go back in there, and tomorrow you got to go back in there. Next week you got to go back in there. You'll be back in there for the next five to ten days, but there will become there'll come a moment when you know. that you can't keep telling people they can keep, stay hopeful. And then once that day hits, what will that be like for you, a person who's, whose life is dedicated to saving lives? Be that those people inside deserve a, a proper burial. And I will work till that's done, and it's just until that's done, because uh, those unfortunate people either gave you the ultimate sacrifice or 
they were innocent. And both, both, uh, both charges call for a proper burial. Thank you. Uh, good luck to you. Sir. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. No, thank you. five blocks away from Ground Zero, and I'm joined with, sir, what's your name again? Frederick Munden. Frederick, and you are one of the heavy equipment operators. Yes, I am. All over America, they've been watching you guys. Um, front loader? Yes. I had the question, you know, last night, man, I'm watching the two, but I'm seeing guys like yourself operating a piece of equipment like this, pulling out debris, and you yeah. know that you could possibly have, you know, human remains there, man. What has what this done to you, sir? Well, it, it actually really tore me apart. I was down here on uh, Tuesday. Uh, it was crazy down there. We all had to run when Building 7 fell. We had to get out the way. And uh, we, went, we went back in there. Uh, was down there on Wednesday also. It's, it's, hold on, it's, hold on, one, hold on one second. Because yeah. this is what... This is what all the workers down here are faced with every day. Yeah. We've got traffic, we've got the police moving people out of the way, emergency vehicles moving. Every time you hear a siren like that, do you think it's it's a warning for you to run or? Yes, what what, what actually what actually uh, they told us to do is, is to, to, to listen for for if, if anybody say run or, or anything, just to get out the way. I was down there, we were down there right at the World Trade Center. Uh, another building, like it was getting ready to fall. Uh, they said run, we all ran. That was on Wednesday. Uh, it, it looked like a bomb hit Martel. It's like the building, a hundred and something stories, is all the way down, okay? And it, most of it went to dust because everything collapsed on each other and the velocity of the building coming down directly, it just is worse than a hurricane worse than anything I've ever seen that was done to a building of that magnitude. You hit the scene on Tuesday. You were there yes. late Tuesday afternoon. Yes, I was. And you spent the last three days operating this equipment down there. Yeah, I spent the last, well, not, I spent the last three days. I went home, I came back, and went home, I came back. Frederick, there are a million, there, there are so many volunteers in this town. Why not just stay out for a couple of days? What keeps bringing you back every single day? Because I know that it's somebody down there I know, I'm hoping, I'm praying that it's somebody alive, that we could go in there and that we could actually get somebody out of there. And uh, whatever they tell me to do when I go in there, uh, I, I go in there and I be in, in, in there as whatever somebody tell me to do. They tell me to dig, I dig. They tell me to operate the machine, I operate. Whatever they tell me to do, I gotta do it because the simple fact is that I'm a red-blooded American and I love this country. What's your name, sir? James Lombardi. James. Local, sure. we're, we're here with a couple of my friends, brothers, the local 1018, New York Paving. And um, I was just wondering if, um, if anybody's seen this man. I was, sure asked, I was asked to come down. And um, I gave it to a couple other places. The picture ain't that good, but so uh, the, the name is uh, Ezra Aviles. Mm -hmm. 41 years old. Yeah, he was on the 61st floor of, um, of Tower One when it got, uh, when it got hit. And nobody heard from him since. You know, is he a friend of yours? One of the ladies that my girlfriend works with, she, um, it's her husband's brother. And so they, they, they wanted to know if I could bring him down because we've been here for a couple of days now. In the last couple of days that you've been down here, you've been down here, you, you operating heavy equipment also? No, we're doing the labor and stuff. Doing the labor stuff. What, what has this been like? I mean, it's, and it's you know, I, I hear the reporters on the news, and, I, and forgive me if this is a ridiculous question. I can't but, imagine what it looks like down there. It's right? unreal, unbelievable. Would you see it? it would you, there's just once you, we we were working yesterday. I mean, Come for on. a good for a good like five five hours straight, yeah, you, handing pails out. Yeah, just mm -hmm. you walk away to go take a break. You turn around. It's like unbelievable, good mess. It's gonna it's gonna be like that. For, it's gonna be like that for a long time until they decide to you know move in with the with these guys. <laughs> but now for you, for the for the three of you. I'm sorry. What's your name? Dave. Dave. For the three of you, you're down here. The rest of America is taking a look. We're watching you move rocks. We're watching you move dirt. But everybody knows that you're coming across 
yeah, remains yeah, of yeah, people. Yesterday, the only they, they found, uh, they just found bits of people. Yeah, right. Bits and pieces, and they, they take them out in buckets. How, yeah. But what does that do? To, I, I don't know if, if I could be sitting there pulling up rocks and dirt, and then reach down and think that I have a, a handful of maybe remains of somebody's loved one. Man, that that would haunt me for I don't know how long. What yeah. about? Someone's got to do it. It's it's a rough thing, you know. You just got to suck it up and do it. I also noticed that that not only are the guys like yourselves, like the, the locals and the guys that are out here, machinists, the guys that that you know, you do this kind of work all the time, construction work. But at the same time, everybody's pulled together. Well, I, I can't believe I can't believe how how nice everybody is around here. I mean, usually, you know, I, I work in Queens and Brooklyn, Bronx, Staten Island. People are. Yeah, well, everybody's, everybody's pulling together. They got sandwiches, everybody's bringing coffee. If you need a break, they double the throw up water. They keep you on for water. It's a shame that it takes, you know, it takes something like, you know, they sooner or sooner late, they wouldn't even turn around to say hello to you after this is over, you know? Well, I have a feeling they'll be saying hello for a long time. Yeah. I hope so. standing down at the armory and I know a lot of you at home have seen this every day. You've seen people down here at the armory that are begging for just one clue, one bit of information that might help them understand and believe that maybe one of their loved ones is still here. This young lady, Lisa King, Lisa King Johnson, has been missing now since Tuesday. Um, we're joined today with her brother and her husband and I, guys, I can't even... It's just a roller coaster of frustration that you have when you, you hear a lot of things, you, you go on your checklist, and I know the city's having a hard time, but you know, they gotta, they gotta get something squared away here that, that's gonna get names to people faster because you have thousands of families just waiting for any bit of, of information that's gonna lead them to, to where their family might be. And if, you know, if, it, if there's not, you know, if they're not one of those people in those hospitals or around here or triage centers or anything, they just got to let those people know that, too. Because we've been chasing around, you know, just I'm sure they're all, all, all the other families have hospitals, triage centers. I, you know, Jim was down there myself. We were both down in the triage centers, you know, ground zero, and I went to the morgue site down there. I mean, I don't know what else we can do. You know? Jim, this is your, your wife. You just got married when? May 19th. And, uh... It's been about 80 hours, I guess. I've been up since then, and uh, just I came. I got strong last night. I, I said to myself, "She's all right. I don't have that that f sorrow yet. I'm just got fear, you know." And uh, Lisa had two children that are now your stepchildren. Has, she has two children. Has I'm two not children. there yet. Okay, yeah. has two children yeah. that are now your stepchildren and yeah. will be your stepchildren. I know. Um, what have you been able to say to them? I know they want to know where's mom. You know, they're with their dad now, and uh, we just just trying, you know, the oldest one, she's a tough girl. And uh, I just don't know what to do, and I, I, don't, I can't even think about facing that yet. Well, our prayers go out to you, and I think the nation understands. There's somebody Thanks. here that may see her, may at least be able to give you an answer. Thanks, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Who are you looking for? This is my boyfriend, Damian Moat. And where was he at? World Trade One on the 101 floor. Did you hear from him at all throughout this? No, I haven't. i am just been waiting by the phone to hear something from him. Either somebody, they found him. We just hope he's hurt. He's badly hurt, and he's just trying to get to us. We can help him in his recovery. Yes. So who are you looking for? Uh, my my brother-in-law is Stephen Joseph. OK, he's on Tower 2, uh, 94th floor. He uh, has a beautiful family. Just gave birth to a brand new baby boy. You know, I'm just sort of trying to find out if he's in a hospital or hurt. Just any other information. You know. Have you been to all the hospitals so far? Montel, I, I live in Jersey City. Okay. We did all the hospitals in Jersey. My brother's been doing all the hospitals in New York. Uh, we came up from Harlem on down. 
and we just seen it with the big crowd here. I noticed you was over here. I jumped out, see what it was. Can I get the picture on, on TV or something? You know, I told, I told my brother. I told his wife I won't follow up back until I find Steve. I know if if, if he's if he's there, we're going to find him. I just know that you need just media help in the words. If he's hurt, you know, any hospital knows anything about him, Steve, just let the family know. It's the fourth day, man. And on this fourth day, without any word, are you afraid to call the wife? Call his wife? My problem is this, Montel. I need to know something before I call her. You know what I'm saying? At least I have found him, you know, whether he's hurt. I just can't call and tell her I didn't find Steve, you know what I'm saying? At least something. I gotta give her some type of hope. So they say no news, good news, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna wait and see. That's the best thing I can really can do right now. But I, I know Steve, he's a fighter, you know He's a fighter, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's the way it is. I know, I know he's out there, but he may be hurt, but his family just wanna know something, you know? What's your name? Hold it up for me. Katie. Katie McCloskey. She was working on the 97th floor of the World Trade Center in the very first tower that was uh, hit by the plane. Um, if anybody's seen her or know anything, anything, um, anybody that was working on her floor maybe or um, any of the survivors that uh, from Marsh Company that, that she worked for, um, if anybody knows of anything, even saw Katie that day, we'd really appreciate it if you would just call our phone number, our home phone number. My mom was standing, standing by in Indy in Indiana, Indiana and uh, she's waiting for any type of phone call whatsoever. Did you know if anybody heard from her at all? Once no. Sister, once the last we've heard from her was the night before I had talked to her and uh, she uh, was on the other line with another friend so I told her to call me when she got to work the next day and uh, of course she didn't but um, we know that she did report to work. Um, Marsh Company has confirmed that for us and that's about the only confirmation that we know of at this point. Um, just want to know either way one way or the other we don't care I mean well, obviously we care either way but we don't we just want to know you know I, I can see I don't know three four five hundred of these flyers here and the count still hasn't come in the final count there could be 4700 of these all over the city 5,000 all over the city everybody just looking for that one piece of hope especially near the 26th Street Armory. There are pamphlets and flyers that contain pictures of some of the missing, where there are family members who are just hoping for one little piece of information about their loved one. I had a chance to talk to several of those family members. So what your name was? Yvette Thomas. Yvette, Yvette Thomas. This is my sister, Bridget. It's your sister, Bridget, who has been missing? Yeah, since Tuesday. She works at American Express um, for Tower One and one tr World Trade Center on the 94th floor. She was on the 94th floor. Did you get any phone calls? How did you find out? How did you find out about I happened? actually talked to her at like 20 to 8, and I was laying in bed because we, we work for the same company, but I work at a different site. Mm -hmm. And my office called and said, you know, have you looked at the television? I said, no, what are you talking about? They said, turn on the TV. And when I turned on the television, I saw the plane go into One World Trade Center. So we're hoping that, you know, she was able to get out. She's in, injured in a hospital somewhere. We can find her. Why don't you guys tell me, tell me who you are and who you're looking for? Where my name's Javier. I'm looking for a good friend of mine named Roland. I grew up with him since since young. We, we were childhood buddies. He's missing. He was on the 102nd floor. This is uh, a cousin of his, Nilsa. This is another brother. Of his, I'm his Johnny. brother, John. John. And uh, we've been we've missed him since since the incident. We've been out here three days, all day. Uh, we've made every phone call to every number. We've been to every hospital, every clinic, every. Infirmary, any every place that we can possibly think of, we've been there. We filed a uh, missing, missing person, person report. report. There's pictures everywhere of everywhere. Roland. It's it's just we've that's it. We've done. We've done everything. 
And, 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 you know, I've asked this question of some of the other people who have come up to me this way, and I said, how frustrating is this not being able to know? I mean, that's, you know, they, that's, because, that's the big point. But you do understand that the yeah. hospitals, the police, it's they're doing, doing the, the best, best they, they can. can. Yeah, you know, I you know that we appreciate what they're doing for us, you know? The, United, the, whole, the whole country's being united, doing a very good job. We just need to know some kind of answers. Um, this gentleman right here, his 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 daughter, I'm not sure who she is, but listen, she also worked with Roland. If anyone has any information with her. This is my daughter. It's Melissa Vincent. She's 28. She worked at Alliance Consulting on the 102nd floor of the World Trade Center building number one. Uh, we, la we last know that, that uh, she made a 911 cell phone call at 90207. We know that from the Sprint provider. Anybody that's had any contact with her, anybody that's had been in touch with her, or anyone else from Alliance Consulting, please contact one of these numbers so that we can try to put this together, try to get to her, try to get to help her to find to find her wherever she is. Okay, yes ma'am, why don't you tell me who you're missing? We are missing our closest friend, Ivan. It was his birthday, and he wasn't supposed to be there. He was supposed to go in on Monday, but they changed his day. Was he just visiting? No, he works at the 107th floor at um, the best bar on earth, part of Windows of the World. He works there with my with my boyfriend, and we've been looking for him ever since. He called from the 74th floor and said that they weren't letting him down, that they were, it was a chaos and he wanted, and he couldn't get down yet. And we think he had time to get down. Some people, we, there have been lots of rumors that other people that were with him were able to get out, but we haven't been able to contact anyone yet. So we're still hoping. And, and how frustrating is it because you know that a lot of the hospitals have information, but they don't necessarily have every single person identified. It's heartbreaking. Every time you hear, sorry, he's not here, it's just like a brick falling on you. It hurts more. But we know that he is somewhere. We have complete faith, complete trust that he's just waiting for us to find him. There's just going to be any moment now someone's going to come forth or we're going to hear his voice on the phone. This has been the fourth day. Tomorrow's the fifth day. I, I would not dash any hopes, but I would ask the question, and when does the family and friends start to think that maybe we need to look at this in a different way? We don't. We don't. We don't. We, because we get it down on our knees and we know that someone is listening to us and that we will get an answer and that we will see him and that he will be fine. We have no doubt about that. And if not, we will get resolution. We will, it will only, we'll only stop hoping the day we die. The attack on this nation on September 11th has shaken this nation to its core and maybe shaken our belief in our ability to stay secure. But the one thing it hasn't shaken here in America is our faith. I'm standing on the steps of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan, and you can see the throngs of people who have come out today to do one thing. One is to pray, to look for solace, and another one is to maybe just look for hope and to think that we will overcome this. Wait, why are you out here, buddy? Just to show solidarity for all the people that this has affected, myself included. I've lost many friends, two in particular, Charlie Dolan's brother, Brendan, and James Riley, that we're still praying and hoping that they're going to find. You know, I, I have heard, as, as a person in the media, I've heard the question asked in the last couple of days over and over again of people like yourself, like, how do you feel? But could you explain it's, it's impossible to say how you feel it's right just a a complete empty void. There's there's no other way to describe it. it. 
your lives will never be the same. We're forever changed, and you just hope that knowing the great spirit of New York and the great people that live here, that we will overcome this, and we're not going not gonna to let them get the best of us. So your name? Hi. Um, just to pray for those people that are lost and pray that they're found. Do you have any personal friends that may be lost? Thank God I didn't, but my husband's office, um, Marsh, they have 10 floors in the first building that was hit, and luckily he's located in Midtown in the other office, so he's safe, thank God. But they lost a lot of employees, and it's, it's terrible. How important is it for us, especially as New Yorkers, to stand like this today? Because I think the rest of the nation may be looking for us for guidance. What do you think? It's so important. That's what's going to bring all of us together and get us through this because it's terrifying. Everyone is, I don't think anyone's ever been this scared in their life. I mean, it's, it's terrible. Thank you. You were just saying to me that your brother was in the World Trade Center. Which one? He was in one, in building one. one. He was coming up out of the path and uh, he got out five minutes after the first plane hit. Good. Yeah. And I'm sure, did your family know that at the time that he had gotten Yeah, he had a new baby, and his wife was really upset. We couldn't get in touch with him for a while, but he was okay. And and so you're out today, out today here at St. Patty's. Why? Just for all the families that are broken right now, all the mothers and fathers. And... Have, you, have you had an opportunity to speak to your brother? Yes. And there's a sense that right now most of those who survive catastrophe are really deeply depressed and really emotionally scarred by this is your brother yeah a lot of my friends can't sleep who are in here my brother is having problems sleeping it was very traumatic is your family what's your family doing to try to help him get through this right now it's just support it's about all we can do you know we're at a loss we don't know what we can do the rest of America is looking in at, at New York in New York and Washington DC where you know the, the three planes hit and they're wondering what the true sense and true feeling is of those who live here. It's three days have passed. Are you starting to feel safer? Or are you still... No. No. <laughs> so maybe there's prayers today of, of hope that nothing like this will happen again. Mm -hmm. And you came out today to St. Patty's. I'm so happy that I have my family that is still here and my friends that are still here, but those who have lost just know that my prayers are with them and that I have never, I've gone to every single officer and hugged them since this began because they have lost so many brethren and sisters and the firefighters who lost so much, so many brethren as well. And I, I have, I've hugged strangers, complete strangers. If there's anything I can say that good that has come out of this and that has made New Yorkers and America stop with what they're doing, look and see who's around them and just hug everybody you can. I have never been so happy to see strangers in my life. I have never been so happy to see strangers. I, like so many other people, think we can even possibly understand what people like yourselves have to go through with so many brothers of the cloth, I mean, brothers in the uniform that are down, um, and yet you still have to go on. How? Well, it's devastating, but uh, basically the way the mayor and the city have rallied everybody around it makes it a lot easier. The support has, has been tremendous. I mean, everywhere you go, you see flags. Uh, first time in years, people are coming up saying nice things. Everybody, the amount of volunteers, uh, construction workers, and everybody that are going down just makes makes it more possible for you to realize that everybody's in this together. I saw a young lady yesterday who just talked to me and said that she was just trying her best to find every police officer she could and give them a hug. I don't know what you guys think about it. It's amazing. It's amazing the way everybody's come together. I mean, uh, it, it's beyond words to... to doing this as long as we have to realize the support that's out there that you never realize is there when a tragedy comes like this i think everybody just shows their true colors have you been surprised at the fact that there's i, I noticed this yesterday i noticed it the day before just driving around so there is a sense of it's not an easy call there's a call in the in the faces of the people who live here and i mean i, I look on the street corner and see you i feel like okay i'm okay you know i'll tell you i think there's a calm but it hasn't sunk in yet. When these real numbers come out and they start pulling bodies out of there, like, you know they're gonna, people are really gonna realize and I think the calm is gonna turn to anger.
in a way. But, you know, uh, I think the New Yorkers can handle the controlled anger, yes, but uh, it's going to be a different scene once they realize what's going on because I just think people do not know what they're in for yet. One last question. You know, a lot of people around the country want to do something for the men in blue, both the firemen. And what should they do? Because there are families right now that don't have dads that are coming home. Um, uh, yeah, we would really just uh, love to, to go uh, light a candle, say a prayer, and not just for us, but for everybody. There's, uh, you, you don't realize how many families are ripped apart. And, uh, it's everybody. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter what you do. You got to stay okay. safe. Okay. okay. Take care. Sunset, and as you can see behind me, it doesn't matter what hour it is, these people are going to work until they drop, until they find another survivor. And if they don't, they just want to make sure that they can bring some answers to all those families out there that need them so desperately. We want to take this moment to just say thank you to the thousands of people that are here working tirelessly, trying to help us all find some sort of resolution to this. And I also want to say thank you so much to the families who have spent the time to take the moment to talk to us, to wish for hope, but to just also express their outpouring of love and what they feel from a nation. I got to go. I will be here and continue to bring you the story as long as I can. Join us on the next month.